Considered to be the greatest European mathematician of the Middle Ages, his full name was Leonardo of Pizzo, or Leonardo Pisano in Italian, but most know him as Fibonacci. He was born in Pisa, Italy, the city with the famous Leaning Tower, in about 1175 AD. Pisa was an important commercial town during Fibonacci's day and had links with many Mediterranean ports. Leonardo's father, Guglielmo Bonacci, was a sort of customs officer in the modern Algerian town of Behaye, formerly known as Bugia or Bouge, where wax candles were exported to France. Leonardo grew up with a North African education under the Moors and later traveled extensively around the Mediterranean coast. He would have met with many merchants and learned of their systems and methods of doing arithmetic. He quickly realized the many advantages of the Hindu-Arabic system over all the others, including the Roman numeral system. Fibonacci was one of the first people to introduce the Hindu-Arabic number system into Europe. The positional system we use today, which is based on 10 digits, decimal points, and a symbol for zero. His book on how to do arithmetic in the decimal system called Liberabaci, or Book of Calculating, was completed in 1202 and persuaded many European mathematicians of his day to use this new system. The book describes in Latin the rules and processes we all now learn in elementary school for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing numbers. The system that Fibonacci introduced into Europe originated from India and Arabia and used the Arabic symbols 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, with most importantly a symbol for zero. With Roman numbers, 2003 could be written as MMIII, or just as clearly, it could be written as IIIMM. The order does not matter since the values of the letters are added to make the number in the original unabbreviated system. With the abbreviated system of IX, meaning 9, then the order did matter, but it seems this system was not commonly used in Roman times. In the new system, the order does matter, always, since 23 is quite a different number to 32. Also, since the position of each digit is important, then we may need a zero to get the digits into their correct places, through columns in the case of 2003, which has no tens and hundreds. The Roman system would have just admitted the values not used. Leonardo's book, Liberabaci, also posed and solved the problem regarding the growth of a population of rabbits based on idealized assumptions. The solution generation to generation was a sequence of numbers later known as Fibonacci numbers. The number sequence was known to Indian mathematicians as early as the 16th century, but it was Fibonacci's Liberace that introduced it to the West. In the Fibonacci sequence of numbers, each number is the sum of the previous two numbers, starting with 0 and 1. The sequence begins 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 233, 377, 610, and 987, and it continues on for infinity. The Fibonacci sequence is extremely common in nature. For instance, did you know that most daisies have 34, 55, or 89 petals? Those numbers are the 9th, 10th, and 11th Fibonacci numbers. Have you ever wondered why 4-leaf clovers are so rare? It is because 4 isn't a Fibonacci number. Also, the Fibonacci sequence appears in seed heads, pine cones, pineapples, and etc. The numbers of spirals going in each direction is a Fibonacci number. There are 13 spirals that turn clockwise and 21 curving counterclockwise on all other sunflowers. The number of clockwise and counterclockwise spirals will always be consecutive. Fibonacci numbers like 21 and 34 or 55 and 34. Spirals come from a property of growth called self-similarity or scaling. The tendency is to grow in size but to maintain the same shape. Not all organisms grow in this similar manner. But if we look at the shell of the nautilus, we see a different growth pattern. As the nautilus outgrows each chamber, it builds new chambers for itself, always the same shape. If you imagine a very long-lived nautilus, its shell would spiral around and around, growing ever larger but always looking exactly the same at every scale. As they crawl towards each other, they spiral into the center, always forming an even smaller square, turning around and around forever. 
Now since all these spirals are self-similar, they look the same at every scale. The scale doesn't matter. What matters is the proportion. These spirals have a fixed proportion determining their shape. It turns out that this proportion is the same as the proportions generated by entries in the Fibonacci sequence. 5 to 3, 8 to 5, and 13 to 8, and so on. In conclusion, Fibonacci proved to be extremely influential in establishing the decimal number system and the concept of the digit zero in Europe in the medieval ages. Once he incorporated this new system into his mathematical studies, it proved useful as he developed the Fibonacci sequence, which in essence is the sum of the two previous numbers in the sequence, starting with zero and one. The sequence had a lot of application in explaining natural phenomena which in turn progressed knowledge in scientific fields within biology.